Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a makeover on this old coffee table. So this was given to me for free and I have been really wanting to tackle this project and I'm finally doing it. So I'm super excited. So I'm going to start off by sanding it down. I was just showing you guys the sanding paper that I used. I also have a really, really old sander. Y'all don't mind this. I know it's like you know, it happens. <laughs> um, but the little filter thing fell off, so I thought maybe trying to stick a sock on the end of it with a hair tie would help contain some of the dust, but it did not work. So definitely make sure that you're wearing a mask whenever you're working with sanding things down um, and make sure you're doing it in a very open, ventilated area. So this took a lot of work, to be honest. I definitely should have used a stripper rather than trying to sand it down, but I had already bought the sanding paper and it was kind of pricey, so... I wasn't backing down at this point. I was going to get this sanded and not spend any more money on a stripper. So that did, that did not sound good at all. <laughs> okay, sorry about the joke. <laughs> but, you know, everybody has a little Im immaturity side to them and we all crack jokes. But <laughs> anyway, I'm just sanding the table down. It took forever. But after getting it all done, I am using a 220 grit to just run over it and just make sure everything is nice and smooth. And this just gives you like a really nice smooth finish whenever you're sealing and everything like that. So don't skip this step, it's really important. So right here I'm just quickly wiping the table clean to make sure there's no dust or anything left over because in just a moment I'm going to go ahead and start staining the top. Okay y'all, so I got the whole table sanded down, but see the problem is the more I sand down on the edges, it's starting to like get down too deep. So I don't wanna sand anymore, I don't wanna mess it up. So I'm just gonna leave the edges a little bit dark and hopefully it turns out okay. Um, maybe it'll just add a little bit of rustic character, <laughs> who knows. I'm gonna go ahead though and use this Early American Stain. This is my favorite color. I have this in my kitchen on the open shelving. I actually plan on redoing my kitchen table too with this color, so. I'm going to go ahead and stain the tabletop, let that dry, and then, um, sorry, I don't know what's going on with my camera, but once it's all dry, I will seal it, and I will explain that whole process. So I'm moving on to staining the table. I'm using a workshop paper towel. You can literally use anything that you want, though, if you prefer to use a paintbrush, a foam brush. You can even use, like, an old sock, an old t-shirt an old hand towel, you name it. As long as you get it on that table, rub on, wipe off, it's all that matters. <laughs> Just make sure whatever you're using is lint free. You do not want to get lint all in the stain that you worked so hard to put on or get, you know, the table sanded down. So anyway, I'm using these workshop paper towels. They worked amazing. I will link some below if you're interested in trying them out for a future project. But like I said, I'm rubbing this on and rubbing it off. I'm not doing it in any, you know, certain way. Sometimes I follow the wood grain and then sometimes I just pour it on and wipe it off. <laughs> so I'm going to do that, get this all stained up, and then we are going to move on to the next step. So this is how it is looking. I seriously just love the detail in this table. It's just so unique. I've never seen anything like it. So I'm excited. I like the color a lot. Now I just got to work on painting the bottom. And there's literally nothing I can do about this rim. You can see it kind of got down to the particle board part of it. I thought it was like a solid wood piece, but I guess it's just like a it's wood on top of like that particle stuff, but 
oh well, what can you do? <laughs> um, there's nothing I can do about it, so there's some parts that are a little bit dark on the edges. But like I said, I think it just gives it a little bit of character. So I'm going to let this dry, and I'm going to clean up the bottom and start painting that. All right, so I'm going to wipe the table down really well, make sure it's nice and clean, and then I'm going to sand the table down a little bit. I didn't do anything crazy down like on the bottom half of the table because I knew I was going to be painting it, but I just took the sanding block that I had on hand and just quickly did a rough sand over the entire table just so the paint would, would like adhere a little bit better since I was not using chalk paint for this project. I actually wanted to try something new and test it out for you guys and give you like a review. Hopefully I can keep you updated and see how it turns out. But I decided to use just regular flat paint instead of using chalk paint. This can was a lot cheaper than buying chalk paint and I thought why not? Why not give it a shot? As long as I seal it pretty well it should be okay. So we shall see. So I started off by doing a really thin coat on the bottom using a foam roller. The only reason why I did this was just to speed up the process. Sometimes I just like to use a paintbrush, but I will say a roller does cut your job in half. If you are like me and you usually just use a you know paintbrush, get you a roller. It did save me a ton of time. it looks so good this is all going to be fixed don't worry but um, I just used the rollers so it was a lot faster and I just did a really thin first coat and then I will add you know a couple more coats I can't tell what's wrong or right should I go without saying goodbye all I know is I need to be somewhere else to set me free. I don't know what to do now, need to figure it out, but I don't know how. I hope the wind will carry me and take me away to where I should be. All right, so I wanted to give you guys an up-close look of how the table was looking after two coats of paint. Um, and so far, it was looking really good. Um, you can definitely see the brush marks and the paint roller marks. And that's really normal with any project I've ever done. I've always had that issue. Um, but the more coats I add, the smoother the finish gets. So it always turns out looking really nice. But I wanted to tell you guys the difference that I've noticed between chalk paint and flat paint so far. So with the flat paint, I feel like it goes on a lot smoother and a lot easier than the chalk paint. Chalk paint can sometimes be a little thick and you know you really have to work it to smooth it out. But the flat paint goes on so nicely. Um, so I definitely loved using the flat paint over chalk paint. So I'm just hoping that it, it holds up just as good. And I will definitely keep y'all updated as far as like, you know, the process um, and over time how it holds up. Y'all will see it in my videos and everything. So I can't hide it. Obviously, if it gets dinged up, it's no big deal. Worst case scenario, I'll distress it and seal it again. <laughs> so there's always a fix to everything. So don't panic if anything like that ever happens. 
So after about five coats of paint, I decided to seal with my favorite polycrylic and the clear satin. So I've used different finishes. I decided to use the clear satin this time because I didn't want it to be a matte finish, but I definitely didn't want it to be super glossy either. I wanted it to be like a very farmhouse style, and I feel like the clear satin is that, that perfect medium. So that's what I chose to do. And I started off using the foam brush. The foam brush always works really well for me, but unfortunately, I bought this pack of foam brushes a while ago, and I don't know if it's just because they've been sitting in the cabinet for a while, but they kind of were crumbling on the table, so I kept having like little pieces like come off while I was rubbing on. So I ended up switching to a paintbrush that I had on hand, but being 100% honest, I always feel like the foam brush gives a way smoother finish. So... Don't use a paintbrush if you don't have to, um, but I had no choice because it's what I had on hand and sometimes when I'm doing projects, there's no way I am running to the store just to grab like a paintbrush or something like that. Um, so I just use what I have and I make it work. So I also wanted to mention that in between each coat of poly, I do sand um, and I had, this is the, actually the first time I've done that. Usually I just do coats of poly, I just do thin coats, um, but after doing research, it says that you should sand in between each coat, and obviously that's a no-brainer, but I like to skip steps. <laughs> What's new? <laughs> I don't like sanding. I've been very upfront with you guys with that. It's just not my favorite. So what I did was I did a thin coat of poly and then let that fully dry for about an hour or so, took a sanding block that I had on hand, and I used the fine side of it and just very gently just rubbed over the entire table to just give it like a little bit of a texture and kind of just break up any maybe bubbles or anything that might have, you know, settled into the poly. And then I wipe it clean and then do another coat. Moving on to some before and afters. This is how the table looked before I got started. This is how it was given to me, and I knew I could bring this table back to life, and it looks amazing. You would never know this is the same table. Just the top of it and all the pretty detail, it's crazy just that this was hidden behind a bunch of black paint and stain. Um, I also wanted to share with you a couple before and afters of how the living room looked before. Um, and then now that I have kind of just redecorated a little bit, I ordered some things off Amazon and I'll share that with you guys in just a moment, but the table looks so, so much better and brighter. Um, and then as far as the decor goes, I bought pretty much everything that you see right here on this tray is from Amazon. The clock, the lantern, the vase, and the um, eucalyptus stems. And I also bought these pillow covers from Amazon as well. They were a pack of two for like 12 bucks, I believe. So super great deal, and my sweet dog just doesn't understand when I'm filming. She likes to be the center of attention. <laughs> but anyway, this is the full transformation. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really appreciate y'all watching so much. If you liked the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, y'all.